Hello, this presentation is going to introduce you to the updated guidance for the implementation of enhanced barrier precautions in nursing homes to prevent the spread of multi-drug resistant organisms. First, some of the common terms used in CDC's guidance and recommendations. This include multi-drug resistant organism, or MDRO, which is a germ such as bacteria or fungus that is resistant to multiple different antibiotics. Examples of MDROs that you might have heard about include Candida auris, MRSA, and CRE, which has been referred to in the media as the nightmare bacteria. When infections develop from these germs, they can be very difficult to treat. Colonization means the germ has been found on or in the body, but it is not causing any symptoms or infection. The presentation will describe the impact and the burden of MDROs in nursing homes and describe the need for enhanced barrier precautions, or EBP, as well as the details behind the indications for and use of EBP. The presentation will also discuss briefly how to be successful with the implementation and use of enhanced barrier precautions. We have learned from studies and outbreak investigations that many nursing home residents are unknowingly colonized with an MDRO especially residents with risk factors for colonization, like in dwelling medical devices or wounds. Residents who are colonized are at risk of developing a serious infection, like a bloodstream infection, can remain colonized for long periods of time, and these germs can spread to other residents through the contaminated hands and clothing of healthcare personnel. To help visualize how common MDROs are in nursing homes, this slide shows data from a large study that was conducted in nursing homes, including a subset of nursing homes called ventilator-capable nursing homes that provide care to ventilator-dependent residents. In the first column, these are the percentages of residents who had documentation in their medical record of a presence of an MDRO colonization or infection. So about two out of every 10 residents across all these nursing homes were already known to have an MDRO. During the study, nursing home residents were tested to see if they were colonized with an MDRO. The second column shows the percentages of residents who actually had an MDRO after testing was complete. As you can see, in the nursing homes that did not provide ventilator care, almost six out of 10 of the residents were found to have an MDRO. And in the ventilator capable nursing homes, the number went up to almost eight out of every 10 residents. So if your nursing home has 100 residents, this would be the same as having 80 of those residents colonized with an MDRO. Historically, nursing homes have used contact precautions when caring for residents who are actively infected with an MDRO, meaning they have symptoms or might even be on antibiotics for an infection. Contact precautions require the use of a gown or gloves whenever entering a room, placing the resident in a single person room and restricting them from all group activities. However, as we just showed with the study, the problem with MDROs is much larger and focusing only on interventions for residents with an active infection is not sufficient. Further, Contact precautions are very restrictive, especially when put in place for a significant amount of time. We also know that contact precautions can have negative consequences. There is a need for an intervention to reduce the spread of MDROs, 
that does not require isolating residents for long periods of time, but that also considers the extended duration that residents can remain colonized. Enhanced to barrier precautions are a method for reducing the spread of MDROs while also reducing the isolation of residents. By using a gown and gloves to prevent contamination of healthcare personnel hands and clothing during the activities that have demonstrated the highest risk for transfer of MDROs to the hands and clothing of healthcare personnel. Enhanced barrier precautions are indicated for nursing home residents who have an infection or known colonization with an MDRO when contact precautions do not otherwise apply. Contact precautions should still be used for the presence of acute diarrhea, draining wounds, or other sites of secretions or excretions that are unable to be covered or contained and may be used for a limited time period during the investigation of a suspected or confirmed MDRO outbreak in consultation with public health. Additionally, enhanced barrier precautions are indicated for any nursing home residents who have wounds and or indwelling medical devices, as these are residents at highest risk of becoming colonized with an MDRO. While prior guidance focused on MDRO outbreaks, novel and targeted MDROs, and limited areas of a nursing home that were experiencing an outbreak, EBP is no longer limited to outbreaks or specific MDROs and should be applied broadly for any nursing home residents that meet the criteria on this slide. Specifically, EBP includes the use of a gown and gloves during high contact resident care activities, including dressing, bathing or showering, performing transfers, changing linens, providing hygiene, changing a resident's brief or assisting them with toileting, direct care of an indwelling medical device, such as a central line, urinary catheter, feeding tube, or tracheostomy, and when performing wound care on any skin opening that requires addressing. A private room is not required for the resident needing EBP, and residents are able to participate in group activities. They are not restricted to their room. This recommendation is intended to be used for the resident's entire length of stay or for those with devices and wounds until the device is removed or the wound heals. For enhanced barrier precautions to be successful, the use of EBP must be incorporated with several other good practices, including hand hygiene, environmental cleaning and disinfection, auditing of hand hygiene and appropriate use of PPE, and communication about residents with MDROs, both within your facility and outside of your facility. We strongly encourage you to look at these additional resources. The first link will take you to the guidance document, including printable versions of the document and the table within the document that compares EBP to standard and contact precautions, as well as additional resources for healthcare personnel and nursing home staff and residents, family, and visitors. The second link will take you to a list of frequently asked questions about EBP, and the remaining link will take you to a more detailed document that reviews available literature and description of the use of EBP that was developed by the Healthcare Infection Control Practices Advisory Committee. Thank you.